Well, in light of what happened last night on the news, um, I'm going to say a prayer first for um, peace. So, Lamb of God, saints and angels in heaven are right in singing. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. Because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. That's taken from Revelations. Let your kingdom come to every tribe and language and people and nation. Deliver us from the bigotry and hate that divide us. Help us to rejoice instead in the great diversity of your creation, to find and focus on the humanity we share and the freedoms we treasure. Amen. Today is not a traditional service, um, so those that were looking for a traditional service today, I hope you all forgive me and uh, we apologize. Today um, we're calling it our mission service. The Lord be with you. Let us pray the prayer of the day that's found in your uh, insert that's in your bulletin. Richly inspire us, O Lord, to consider and accomplish what you see is good. For we know that we cannot live without you, but with you we shall prevail. And so we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Today I want to go back to the gospel and sermon that made an impact on me to start the disaster response warehouse down here. So today's gospel is Luke 12, 13 through 21. The parable of the rich fool. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, Tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me judge or arbitrary over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, <laughs> for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentiful. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? for I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I'll tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Here ends the gospel. <laughs> Y'all yeah, may be seated. I can't give y'all the exact date, but Pastor Ron Walter had a wonderful sermon on this gospel that spoke to me. He graciously gave me a written copy of this sermon, and that's what I'm taking from. The rich man in today's gospel lesson was not a bad man. Jesus didn't condemn him for eating, drinking, and being merry. He didn't put down for having enough to live on. The man was called foolish for building bigger barns, which is what I was doing at the time. He and I were foolish for being greedy. His sin wasn't that he'd become wealthy, but that he wanted to hoard all his wealth for himself. His sin wasn't that he had the means to live the good life. Jesus calls foolish anyone who refuses to share the possessions they do not need. It's a warning about being short-sighted, about failing to be the good custodians of what God has given us to live on and to share with others. To see our possessions as blessings from God is to realize that we have them on loan. We don't own them. Blessings are something given out of the goodness of someone's heart. And I am truly blessed to have been able to build a huge she shed for my cars and then some. That is what spoke to me to give an area of that big she shed for the disaster response warehouse storage. 
I know our congregation took this message to heart as well because y'all have overwhelmed me with the Lent offering that was earmarked for the warehouse. I have just started to use these donations and just with a small part of it, I have been able to replace the flood buckets that I've given to Rosenberg and start stock on other items such as mops, brooms, fans, and items for kitchen. Thank you all. I also hope by revisiting this sermon that it has reached your heart to also volunteer to help put these kits together. And just want to take this time to also say that on this sheet, it does show you what we do have at the warehouse, and we're hoping to increase that by quite a bit. So thanks be to God. And now it's time for a song that apparently Pastor Bill was instilling in me throughout the years, since it seemed like it was always the song that we sang when I came down to visit. It works well with the sermon, so let us sing Trust and Obey.
Everybody's getting their exercise today because you can now be seated. <laughs> hmm. So now that we are spared of wind and flood damage from barrel, I would like to ask, are you ready to go if I told you to evacuate? Have you thought about what you would need to take with you? When I was first asked these questions, I said, my phone, my purse, and pebbles. <laughs> but then they asked me, well, what about your husband? Which I replied, he's a grown man, he can take care of himself. Which is true. <laughs> but then I took the disaster response training and found that there is a lot more that I should have go, ready to go. So let's talk about that. It's suggested that you have a bag, backpack, or container ready to go at all times. I have my small suitcase. In this suitcase, I have, I hope y'all can hear me. Maybe I should get over here. <clears throat> a flashlight, earplugs, because my husband snores. charging cords for that phone, a medication bag that has all my medicines in it, a toiletry bag, shower, bathroom bag, three days of clothes, my daddy's Bible, and my cheaters because it's very small print, and the bag that was given to you, which you've noticed I have pictures, because you want pictures of your family in there, so that if you get separated, don't know what you're to look for, who to look for. So let's talk about the stuff that's in this bag. I'll briefly go over it. Y'all can look at them. Y'all don't have to take them out of your bags. You can look at them later. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to call me. So in this bag are great resources, forms to use to help gather up information and documents that you'll want to have with you. The first thing is the NALC disaster response travel suggestions for your bag, which is a lot of what I have in mind, but there's a few other items in here like a battery powered radio, uh, if you have babies you'll need the baby stuff different few other things that you'll want to just look over and make sure that if you need those. And on the back side, it has things to do after the disaster. Numbers to call, what to take care of, as far as like calling your insurance company, and talking to your church about what resources are available. And then you come across the State of Texas Assistant Registry form. This is actually for the elderly or the disabled. And if you're both, then you definitely want to register. So you want to follow this form and make sure you register with them. The next item is Civic Ready. This is from the city and how they communicate with you during, your, during a disaster. So again, you'll want to read over this and fill it out, do what it says, so that if there's a disaster, they can get a hold of you. The next one is the counties get ahead of what's ahead, their list of what to have ready. It has be informed, make a plan, and build a kit, which is the kit is basically your backpack or your suitcase. Then they provide you with 
forms to make your family emergency plan. This has where you want an out-of-town contact name, a local contact name or neighbor, all your important information, the doctors that you use, insurance that you use. So definitely look that over, fill it out, make sure you leave it in your bag. This is waterproof bag. And the next one is also on your plans as far as what you should build or what you should fill out. Then the thing I like about this one as far as building your disaster supply kit is it has where you can check it off, little boxes to check it off as you go. And they do carry a lot more items like food and water, first aid medication, communication lighting, document bag items, um, items that you want to have in your car if you have to evacuate in your car, and what to do before you leave home, steps in case you have to shelter at home, what you need to do. On the back is pet supplies, what you should have in a first aid kit, document bag kit contents, which is the bag, and what all you should have in it. And then what to do with people with, dis people with disabilities and those with access and functional needs, what you might wanna have for them. And then the other ones that we have is to be prepared for cyber attack. Some good information there. Be prepared for a thunderstorm, lightning, or hell. And of course, what you want right now, be prepared for a hurricane. All the information on that. So if you fill these things out and pack up your bag, hopefully you will be go ready on the next disaster. And make sure you remember those pictures. So I at least left his picture in. So if he gets lost, I can find him. All right, well, I appreciate your time. And for the next deal on the bulletin is the prayer. So if you don't mind rising for the prayers. Lord God, Heavenly Father, in you all things are new. Today we begin a new week, a new opportunity to see your work in our life. As we look forward to what lies ahead, let us rejoice in the blessings of the past week. Thank you so much for the needed rain. Remind us of the mercies you show us, the gifts you gave us, and the ways you used me in your service. As we stride into the new week, strengthen our hearts to share your love and our hands to do your work. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us end our service with my hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, page 294.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we will.